You know, all realtors are liars, right? Well, that's what everyone thinks. So let's start going over some of the rules out there for real estate agents and what that means for you as a consumer out there in the real world, especially in the tough world that you're having that's going on right now. Hey everybody, it's Eric, and I'll talk about everything that's going on in the real estate world, not only in the United States, but here in the Las Vegas area. And if you appreciate the stuff I'm talking about, just go ahead and hit that uh, subscribe button, hit that like, leave me a comment. If I have a chance, I promise I will try to get back to you. So let's go ahead and get on with the show. As you know, I'm a retired military officer, and it's actually been difficult coming over to this side because when I retired, I left one of the most respected careers out there. When you look, being a military officer is a very respected career for most people. And going into real estate is like being a used car salesman. It's down at the bottom in respect as far as what people think of you know, trustworthiness. So I try to bring a little bit of a different flair to it. I don't consider myself a real estate agent like most people who consider themselves salespeople. I'm a retired military guy helping folks buy and sell homes. So I want to start going over some questions that some of you may have about uh, purchasing homes and the ethics of real estate. Now, the one thing I've noticed is everyone talks about the ethics of real estate agents, but it seems they don't mind their real estate agents ethics when it helps them out somehow and it's like when your agent lies to get you a better deal to get you more money to save money it's okay when another agent lies then all agents are bad it's kind of like politicians you know when the representative from across the country lies or the different political party lies there's something wrong but when my representative lies when my representative gets me a new bridge or the school built in my district, that's perfectly fine. But when it happens across the country, it's pork. It's the same thing. But you know what? I don't want to get into that. Here's what I want to talk about. Some ethics issues that you may have questions about, and I'm going to go over them real quick for you today. Here's ethics issue number one. Now, I'm sure you hear this one a lot, especially in today's world because a lot of houses have bids on them, almost five bids for every house that's out there. Well, why can't I know what everyone else is bidding on the house? Well, think about that. If you knew what everyone else was bidding, they would know what you're bidding. So I wanna know what everyone else is bidding so what I can know what I can bid. Okay, great. So let's say you know the house is up in the market for $400,000. The high bid is four oh five. dollars Okay, I'll bid four oh six. dollars Wonderful. Okay, tomorrow someone comes along and goes, what's the high bid? Four oh six. dollars I'll bid four oh seven. dollars Now you just lost. Every other person will ask me that question. Then I put it to them that way, and they go, well, I don't want anyone to know my bid. I just want to know everyone else's bids. I'm wondering what magical world that works in, where you can know everyone else's bid, but your bid has to stay secret. Uh, yeah, ethical dilemma there, huh? But as far as the ethics of whether or not the agent can tell me as an agent, they can. It's actually in Article 3 of the Realtor Code of Ethics because it is in the best interest of their client and they're not supposed to lie to me. A perfect example is I was going out to show um, townhomes and condos this weekend, and I asked an agent, do you already have um, offers on this uh, townhouse? She just responded, just have your client submit their highest and best offer. That wasn't my question. I didn't ask what the numbers were, how many. I just wanted to know if there are offers to see if I was gonna waste my time because my client sent me literally 19 places and I was trying to narrow things down. I mean, I had to sit there and pull teeth to finally find out there were multiple offers on the place. She just wanted to get more offers. 
borderline there. Just answer the question. Next one that can be a little bit of an ethical issue. Sometimes, uh, let's say you get the house finally and you got the earnest money and you may be a person that is not technically savvy, doesn't know how to do the wiring to get the money there. It's like, hey, let me just write a check and I'll just give it to you. It's like, I don't want to touch that money. And most realtors do not want to touch that money. And you may just sit there and try to push a check into my face. And so here's the problem. I could end up with an ethics complaint purely because I took your check and didn't send it to the title company in a timely manner. And timely is very subjective. So I could take your check on Saturday night and on Monday morning, a client can call me up and say, I want to go see houses. Oh, I go show them houses all day long. And then I write offers. Then I can't get to the title company. Then maybe Tuesday afternoon I do it. That's not timely. What was I supposed to do? That client wanted to come go see houses. You wanted to shove a check in my face. Something happens. First thing you're going to do is, I shoved a check in your face. Why didn't you deposit it? You shoved a check in my face on Saturday night. I asked you to do the proper thing to go through the wire transfer procedure. You wanted to shove a check in my face. That's the reason I don't let people shove checks in my face. It can create an ethical dilemma. So that's one and why a lot of realtors will not take that check from you. This next one is one of the most common ones. I want to live in a safe and great neighborhood. Who doesn't? I do. Most people do. I've never came around and said, you know what? I learned karate. I have a black belt and I want to practice that every day. So find me the worst neighborhood possible. I want to walk out, grab somebody, flip them over my head and beat the heck out of them. <laughs> I haven't heard that one yet because it usually doesn't happen. Their neighborhood is like that. But you know what? I can't go like, you know what, that's the uh, the flipping neighborhood where you got to worry about uh, walking out your house. You got to hide your kids, hide your wife. Yeah, uh, I can't tell you that, but you're going to ask me. If I were to tell you, hide your kids, hide your wife, I've committed an ethics violation. I've stigmatized that property. I've stigmatized that neighborhood. If um, I produce a crime map for you to say, okay, here, here, here's the crime stats for that neighborhood. You, be, you make the decision. I have committed an ethics violation. But if I give you the website and go, you can look uh, up the crime stats yourself, I have provided you the means for you to do it yourself. So I have not committed an ethics violation. So when your realtor is not answering those questions, they're doing that to protect themselves and you. And also, sometimes people call up asking those questions and they're not actually looking to buy a house or sell a house. They're actually investigators looking to see if the realtor's gonna go, oh no, you wanna live in neighborhood X. It's the greatest, the school systems are the greatest. That's another one, we can't tell you how great the school system is. You gotta go to places like greatschools.org and look up the ratings on the school. Okay, so I hope we can finally get that clear. And realtors who sit there and they talk all day long, they're these high eye personalities and they're doing this stuff and they're telling you. And I've had people go like, well, these other realtors, they'll just tell me all the great neighborhoods and how the schools are and all this stuff. And they're committing ethics violations if someone finds out. It's not a good thing. So just telling you, if you're following the rules, I'm not supposed to tell you these things, they're ethics violations. But you ask us to be ethical, and then you ask us to violate them. I'm just telling you what the ethics rules are. This next one here is a little controversial. It's on the border. Uh, it's the buyer love letter, where you write that love letter to the seller talking about how much you love the property and how you're going to love it and your family and so forth and your little dog Skippy and all this stuff. No, those things used to be the staple of real estate. Well, now they are landmines of possible fair housing violations. And you could have something in that letter. You don't mean it. 
and your realtor does a mini canoe. He not have read it, you know, and it gets passed on. And let's say another person who was trying to buy that house finds out about that letter somehow. I don't know. Maybe your seller put it on their Facebook page because they loved it so much and it made them cry. And the dog Skippy, they were hit by the car, they survived it. And you, you, you know, you had them in that little wheelchair thing for dogs where their little back paws were in the in the little scooter thing and all that stuff. And, and you had the picture of your 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 kids and the person single. <clears throat> they may say you discriminated against them because they were single. They could file a lawsuit. I'm serious. This is serious stuff. We live in a litigious society where your decisions can really come back to haunt you. And there are some cases, I may go deeper in some other videos, where stuff like this has actually happened. And I know some realtors still say, let's write them letters. The National Association of Realtors says, stop writing those letters because you can be putting yourself into a landmine. <sighs> now I gotta talk about the next one. Discount brokers. So some realtors like to work for a certain amount of money, call that commission. Get that <laughs> commission breath. So some of these discount brokers have gone to the sellers and said like, hey, I can sell your house for a discount. I'll sell it for X, Y, Z and we'll give out XYZ as a commission. It could be flat fee, it could be, you know, one banana, two bananas, whatever. And they go like, I ain't gonna work for that. I work too hard. So they may try to hide that away. May not want you to see it, or if you do see it, they're gonna talk that down. Now, if they're talking things down, that's a perfect house for you that clicks all the boxes, that's an ethics violation. The house that works for you is the house that works for you not the commission or the money that the agent is going to put in his or her pocket. Okay. Make sure that um, that's not happening. So one of the good slash bad things that's happening, there are some, a lot of bad to it and a little bit of good is um, one of the consent decree things that we're having with the department of justice is the commission percentage is going to be uh, shown to uh, buyers now. So you'll kind of know if somebody is kind of uh, maybe BSing you and trying to steer you towards another house because they ain't getting enough money on this one. The bad I see long term, I mean, I'll briefly discuss it. Some people may go like, now they see it. It's like, can't you break a little something off for me? And that, that's why I see it's going to be bad. Don't try to break off somebody else's commission. They're working hard for you, but I'm just putting that out there. You know, I figured I bored you guys enough with this ethics stuff because it's dry and boring. So again, if you like what I've been talking about, hit that subscribe button. And you know what? I may come back with a part two. It may not be next week, but I'm going to have a part two for you because this is really interesting stuff and stuff you guys need to know about how real estate works. So when you're out there and you're buying and you're selling homes, you know what we're doing. And as always, I got more videos for you.